Hi, I'm Angela with Dance with Angela. <laughs> and I'm sharing on how dance connects us to balance and love. So one of the teachings from uh, the somatic movement teachings through Bonnie Bainbridge Cohen and also Annie Brooke. Annie Brooke's amazing. Um, she works a lot with the development of, of the child and how we embody a lot of things through birthing that can last throughout our life. Um, but one of the things that Bonnie gave us was that relationship between push and pull as one of the primal movements in movement. So even from in a child development point of view, Bonnie and Annie are looking at how when you are learning these these basic movements as a child from crawling, even in utero, pushing and pulling uh, are actions that you start to explore. And especially when you come out into the world, your first movements, you're learning how to reach and how to yield, how to surrender back into your body and how to push and find resistance in the world. You're doing that in utero too. It's just that your senses are still not really developed then. So movement in, in utero is super, super important. So in dance, one of the things that you learn is a lot about your boundaries to others. Sometimes if you're dancing by yourself, you may not have that sense. But a lot of us dance by ourselves in the the new world order uh, in a collective space where you're not really holding or touching hands with people. You might be in a, a dance environment where you're just dancing, but you can feel other people around you, but you're not holding their hands or actually dancing close to them. I remember <laughs> I, I'm sort of a babe for the disco times, but I remember in, in the transition from disco to other dances that started to evolve after disco there was the whinging the complaining that happened like oh people don't hold hands anymore so what's this freestyle dancing um, but freestyle dancing's been around forever it's just uh holding hands was a really important part of social dancing for a very long time and there's a good reason i know heaps of my friends parents who met through social dances we actually got to hold hands and start to feel that push and pull of the other person and it's extremely important and think about this like even as a as a point of reference for people going out and dating um, in the 50s and 60s and even in the 20s and 30s of the 1900s people would have done social dancing where they're pushing and they're pulling with their hands or if you're having hold hands and a shoulder you're learning how the other person pushes and pulls you with their hands in the embrace or whatever hand-holding technique. I've got other stories to share about salsa dancing and what I experienced through salsa dancing because there's a lot of hand-holding and a lot of the, the man has to hold you in a certain way around the waist or the lower back or under the shoulder blades. But some salsa dancers do much more subtle holding so they can hold with the fingers. So all those social dancers had a lot of hand contact, which gave you, because our hands are spiritual centres where you can really feel the energy of the person, not just their spiritual self, the, the emotions and the, and the physical and the mental energy of the person, the whole package. You can feel it very quickly through the hand centres. So imagine all of those people in social dances that basically through hand contact were getting readings very quickly about a potential romantic partner or potential future parent of their child. Because putting it simply, a lot of social dances was about people getting together to make babies. That's what has been happening for a long time. So with hand contact you are able to feel that and push and pull. A lot of that feeling of how someone 
pulls you in or pushes you away will give you a sense of how much you can push up against their boundaries and how much they'll let you in and how much they'll push you back. So it's a really important part of the whole process of our bodies being able to choose a partner or to choose who we relate to and how much we we push and how much we pull them in or how much we we might want to pull them in but that's not such a good idea maybe so hand and hand contact was super enormous and if we look at dance as a way where you are using those hands to push someone or send energy through your hands to them or in the mid-eastern dances there's a lot of pulling in to the heart body or pushing away from the heart center uh, you can literally with the chi take someone or ask their energy to come into you but only at a certain point <laughs> and then push it away <laughs> Or you can imagine that you're taking them into your heart and then letting it go. So the pulling in and the pushing is a part of most uh, traditional movement traditions like Qi Gong, Tai Chi, belly dance, Mid-Eastern dance. Um, and you learn how that also connects to your center. So mainly what's the reason to pull in an energy and what's the reason to push out an energy? There's a thousand reasons, maybe more. When it comes to love, it's always about um, what am I bringing in and what am I sending out? That's the simple thing from our centre channel when we're coming into that um, centre core, what, what you're pulling in can be the in-breath, what you're pushing out is the out-breath. And it's always to do with your intent. But most of the time when we're breathing, we're not thinking, oh, I'm pulling in love and I'm sending out love. We don't operate like that. We do it unconsciously. And so when we're coming to dance and how it teaches us about balance, most of those social dances were unconsciously helping us learn about what boundaries we have, whether we are conscious or unconscious of those boundaries. For example, um, you might be going, I'm talking about the 1950s now, you might be going to a social dance and in the 1950s, if you're a woman, you would be waiting for someone to ask you to dance. So you're not going out with your body and putting your hand out to offer for a dance, you're sitting there and you're energetically wishing or thinking, I would like that person to dance with me. And you're maybe using your eyes and sending out the intent with your eyes. Or you might be looking around the room to see if anyone's looking at you because <laughs> you're craving significance. You're craving somebody to want you and you're not that fussy. Or you might be too fussy, little Miss Muffet, and you're thinking, I don't know who's good enough for me here. Because you might just have particular boundaries about what you're going to bring into your social dancing sphere in that situation. Your boundaries might drop in another situation. But you are sending out the signal through your thoughts, your eyes, your body posture. And then for the men who are in that 1950s social context seeking to dance with someone, they're going to be also using their eyes to check out who they want to dance with. And they're going to use a gesture to ask. There's some sort of cultural formality. So those formalities were all sort of set up by the culture. So if you had balance in that situation, what would that look like? What would that mean, balance? The balance comes from 
the society creating those social guidelines about how the conversation starts. But there's no real training for the individuals, men or women, what, what happens internally if I like this. If I, so each dance, each dance partner, they get to explore what they're feeling through the hand contact or the body contact and the energy exchange, what they're feeling internally. And that, my friends, is a fantastic example of how to learn balance. Because you might feel, I don't like this person, and you're still dancing with them because you've accepted the dance, and then you have to learn how to thank you at the end of the dance and disengage and politely go, I don't really want to dance you with you anymore. Thank you. That was very nice. And disengage. <laughs> and but the nonverbal stuff that's going on through the dance is teaching you about all that stuff internally. Oh, I don't feel good about this. Oh, oh, I, I like this. There may be some conversation during the dance. So you get to interact with words. But a lot of the times you might be just using the feelings. And so a lot of those feelings can be arousing feelings in the body as well. So you have to learn, what do I feel about that? Is my emotions going to make a story about, oh, we're kismet, we're soulmates and we've been destined to meet through this dance. So all the time you're learning from feeling emotions. What is it that's actually going on? And there's no real, I got it right, I know exactly what's going on. It's, it's As I said in one of the other videos, it's a process, right? You're going to make mistakes. You're going to make up stories. You're going to have emotions that sometimes are not accurate. Uh, some of our favourite romance stories, like Pride and Prejudice, the woman in that story completely judges the man she ends up going out with. But in the dance she starts to interact with him and starts to feel the vibration of the person. And she has to learn how to balance her own judgments and misconceptions and also her sense of shame about her status in society and other judgments that she's made about herself and others. So it's a really good example, that book and the dance that happens there. So moving forward to our modern culture where we're not touching hands, What's happened is we're learning how to balance internally without so much social interaction. I mean, people are whinging and complaining that, oh, people aren't stooping anymore, they're not getting it on, they're not touching hands and, and experiencing the energy with each other. But actually a lot of people are learning social dances again. They're learning swing, salsa. That's very popular because people get it. And other people are actually just saying, you know what, I want to experience my energy and they don't need that stimulation from social dancing that we had to do that. They're learning how to balance their energy through the rise of yoga and meditation. That, that was never as popular as when I grew up. Now it's really, really popular and it's a really great way to experience your vibration and your energy and come into balance by breathing or by feeling your body. How radical. And those things were less popular in the West because we were doing other things at the time. And now people are really looking to find internal balance through, through movement, through feeling their body. So dance can be a fantastic way. And the dances that I'm looking at are more meditative. You can explore balance through all forms of dance, through going off your centre, and exploring how to maintain your balance. However, I do want to share one technique that was given to us by Annette Luce, which was really transformational for my ability to balance in yoga postures, in anything in my life, physically. But it also gave a huge anchoring for my heart and my sense of self. And what Annette shared with us was feeling into that centre of the chest, which we call the heart centre. But for those of you who don't know about the heart centre, it's just that literally that centre of the chest. 
and you feel a bit bit deeper than the topical part where my fingers are and you go deeper in you might want to close your eyes to feel it it's just a few inches or centimeters down below where your fingers are and you can even go you know four inches or 10 centimeters internal into that heart center it doesn't matter just feel whatever you feel inside and then what Annetta would have us do was feel that heart center hovering in the space between your feet and that my friends was revolutionary for me the space between my feet was not just an empty void it was enormous because the space between my feet also was hovering on the center of the earth and there were times when I was feeling that heart center balance on the space between my feet where I actually connected to that earth center and I do that now in a lot of my meditations I feel that heart center over the space between the feet but I actually feel it really deep dive down into that heart of the earth and so subsequently because I had that physical space of the space between the feet and the heart center being able to balance on top of it when I went into my other dance which was mid-eastern dance or belly dance when I did my chest lift I always knew where I was lifting from and this goes back to what Bonnie was sharing about push or push and pull what are we pushing against and what are we pushing away from you've got to have your center you've got to have a center to push and pull from or away from or pull into and for me, it was that space between the feet with my heart centre hovering off over that was able to give me an anchor for my heart centre that revolutionised the whole way my body worked. So even now if I do yoga and I do mountain pose, I have this beautiful space between the feet that gives me a platform for my heart to lift away from and my crown to move away from my fingers to reach away from and then if I really just drop in I can feel it anchoring to the earth the center of earth and it's just enormous it's so beautiful I have it in the body of love and the energy body of self-acceptance as well that enormous beautiful connection in the center of the earth that anchors us and connects to the space between the feet and the center of the balls of the feet as well and then that center space between the feet is where we balance our heart center and then from there the upper body can reach into amazing spaces so it changed my belly dance as well because the heart center then had a, a really luscious space between the feet that it could hover over and then I could make my rotations feel yummy and juicy over it and I could also feel a space opening in my chest and upper body that made the movements have a different flavor and feel in that space so dance and movement allow enormous creativity enormous expression of how we can explore our our feelings in the body and our feelings of ourselves and that's everything that I've been sharing in the body of love how do we feel ourselves through movement it sometimes is internal in in how we feel um, connected into that center balance core but also how do we explore balance it's by going off balance and that connects back to what I was sharing with when we did social dancing and we don't like somebody, it pulls you off your center. You go, oh, I don't, oh, I don't like this. Oh. But then you come back and then you have another dance and then you feel, hmm, that's different. What's that about? So 
we're meant to go off balance. It's important. Love is about discovering balance, but it's not about being zen and perfect all the time. It's actually about exploring what is not in balance, what makes me feel balance, what makes me feel this core, and what makes the core also open up to more. So balance is that ability to feel that core and feel what then comes from having that balance. It's not about just being perfectly static as well, which is why dance is enormously important because it allows us to feel the flavours of when things are off and then when things come back and then when things feel something else. There's so much that comes from having a sense of what's your core, what's in balance and what's you. So that's a brief description of balance because it's a large area that we can explore because there's so much about going off balance that's important and I'll be talking more about how dance informs us about balance in um, different topics around the body and around meditation and around the chakras as well so stay tuned for the um, the chakra series because I've, I've got more to share about balance and going off balance and how that's important for evolution of our consciousness Thanks for uh, watching and I'll um, be in touch with the next part four, which is going to be about, um, yeah, how um, ah, yeah, I forgot. So thank you and I'll uh, look at how love is a kinetic force. That's the next one.